what's cracking everybody is video number three and this is going to be a continuation on the first video the interface video that i did i'm just going to be showing you in this video how to well i'm just going to be sort of getting your feet wet showing you how to move objects between different geo nodes i'm going to be showing you how to copy parameters and not only copy them but reference them and finally i'm going to be showing you something a bit more interesting which is uh which is creating a cloner I'm going to be going way more into depth in later videos about how to build like a, a proper cloner with different inputs and also way more depth about the variables and the sort of uh, attributes that I'm going to be editing. So first off, let's put down a geo node as we, as we do. Jump in here and then I'm going to do a classic sphere. And instead of just putting this to a polygon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this to through a convert. And convert nodes are really useful because it actually allows you to change whatever an object is after the fact. So um, you can scale this up to increase the number of polygons on it. It's the exact same as turning up the frequency in, in here, the one that's grayed out. And you can do this with a ton of different things. Like you can even have, uh, if you had like a polygon initially, actually, let's just layer these up so we could do a polygon and then layer up again and then do circle and I'll put a circle on every single one of these points you know stuff like that and NURBS curves I'm going to be talking about this and Bezier curves later down the line in the curves tutorial which are splines for all you cinema users so now that we've got our polygons we can actually pull these and make uh, some edits to this so if I put down a mountain salt then I can you know displace this and um, how would I get this into another geo node? Because for example, if I had a big setup where I wanted to maybe copy to points or something, uh, or, or maybe scatter um, some points and then do some different things with it, I might want to take that out of the um, this network. So normally what I'll do is I'll put down a null and nulls essentially are just sort of a separator or like a a little reference point for you so before you do anything in a setup you could put a null and then you do like points out or something like that if you do out it will appear at the top of a list if you don't if you um, put down an object merge so this is what we're going to use to bring this object over into another SOP or over into another geo geo node so if I click here you're gonna it's gonna bring up this operator select selection list and this is the tree view. So, you know, it's sort of, if you're coming from another tree package, this is probably a bit more familiar. But as you can see, out goes at the top of this list. And if I was to reference geo, it's going to basically just look at whatever is the selected object in this, in this, um, on this level. So if it was sphere, then it would import the sphere. So that could be useful. But if you want to always have it on a certain node, then just select that certain node so you can go out. So that's created an absolute reference. And what I mean by that is that I could bring this anywhere in my network and it will know where it is. But if I was to drag this out node up here, it's going to create a relative reference. And what these dots are is it's going back out of this node. So it's going out of object merge and it's going into out. Now, um, this is not very useful if I bring this into another geo node. So I click U, went back and create the geo node. I'm pasting now. As you can see, the reference is broken. I middle click and it's invalid because this reference doesn't exist. But just for um, argument's sake, we could you wouldn't you wouldn't do this but you can go back to and this will put you onto geo level and as you can see we've got our geo we go into geo and then we just select out and there we go if i hide it you can see that that object is there now but what you should do is just select the object and uh, it will create a proper reference another useful thing this sort of stems off of the the interface if you click here this will take you into your into your network, which is very useful. So wherever it's referencing, you can click here and it'll take you there. Very nice, very useful. So another thing with object merge is this transform option. And what this means is that 
Um, if I was to do a transform in here, so make sure you do it before you're out. If I move this around and I make everything visible, you can see that that is moved. But if I was to move this on the geo level or the OBJ level, you can see that this is not being brought along with us. It's being left so sad. And the way you could remedy this is either by parenting, like so. I'm doing Y to delete this wire, Y and drag. Or you can go in here and do into this object and this will allow us to move this around like so. Now I'm going to hide this and go into our object merged node. And now I'm going to be talking about relative references. So if I put down a transform in here, I could also copy the points uh, or copy the transform onto this. I don't know why you would. But just to show you what this function does, it's very useful. So if I was to set this value to 25, 5 so you can still see it, you can right click and copy parameter and go into another parameter, just hover over and right click and then do paste values and I'll paste the exact values. But if I change this, it's not going to bring it over. It's not going to kind of actively update this because it's not being referenced. But what Houdini has is uh, if you do a copy parameter again and then you do copy or paste relative references it's going to paste a channel called tx and this is actually just looking inside this node and it's seeing what parameter is called tx and if you go up to your translate you can see that we've got tx ty and tz and this is tx so if i click this this is this is toggling an expression so as you can see that that um, rotate box is not highlighted, but if I click it, it's highlighted and we can see the expression is inside that box now. So now I can move this around. Bye bye Kev. So you can move this around um, freely and it will also translate onto your rotate as well, which is obviously really low. But say I just copy this and paste it up here and then I'm just doing control shift left mouse button to delete that channel now. And now it's moving up on X and Y equally at the same time. Very useful, very useful. And you can also copy from other parameters outside of this network as well. So if I was to go up here, copy this parameter and paste it over here, paste relative references, you can see it's going back up to geo level or uh, OBJ level like we did and it goes into transform, but we could also make this a bit shorter by doing this slash obj. Does the same thing and it's we've not got any errors, it's all fine. So that's referencing a channel called tx in another in this location here. Now I'm going to be creating a little cloner. So let me delete this and I'm going to put down a geo, jump in here and create a grid. This is what we're going to copy our points to. And then I'm going to put down a copy to points. So there's a bunch of copy nodes. I'm not going to be looking at stamp in my tutorials, but it is useful. Um, but you can do everything that you need to with copy to points now. So I just use copy to points um, because kind of historically copy to copy stamp is, is pretty slow. Copy transform is literally just, you should be able to figure it out for yourself, but it's just uh, taking whatever you have and just moving up by however much you put in the translate. Um, and again, I'll be going into much more depth on this stuff, so don't worry if you don't understand certain things that are going on. Now, if you hover into over an input, you can see what um, this input is looking for. So it's looking for target points. And you might be like, oh, this is not a point. Well, it's got points on it, so it's going to copy to the points. Nice and easy. And we put down a sphere. And this will be the object that we copy onto these points. So that's easy enough. You go in here, we've got guide geometry, which we can turn on and off if it's distracting. And you can instance these as well with a number of options on like levels of display. So if you've got really complicated geometry that you don't want to slow down your viewport with, you can hide it. Um, I'm going to leave it on at the moment. So yeah, and um, also another thing I forgot to mention, if you click L, 
it will organize your nodes. So if you've got everything all messed up and looking crazy, you click L, I click H as well to center it, and there we go. Another really useful thing is Control F. We can search for stuff. So if I do sphere, <laughs> then it's going to bring that up. So I do sphere and then enter, it'll bring that up. If we have multiple, you can see what will happen. It'll have select all by default. And that is really useful, especially when you're working with a large uh, network of nodes. So now how do we, how do we affect these points? Um, and again, don't worry, I'm going to explain all these attributes in my VEX tutorials and stuff like that. But if I put down an attribute randomize, which I normally wouldn't endorse using, but if I drag onto this wire, see as you, it's already randomizing these points here. And whatever this, whatever is over here on these points is being copied over onto our geometry just automatically, which is really useful. So as you can see here, if I delete this, it's getting rid of everything. And this is because of this asterisk here. If I delete this, it's, it's gone, it's gone. Um, an asterisk uh, in Houdini essentially means that it's going to look for everything. If I do this greater than, uh, or whatever it's called, the to the power of, so if I do asterisk to the power of, it's not going to look at this object. So I could do to the power of CD, which is color, it stands for color diffuse and it's not going to look for color diffuse now so hopefully that makes sense i can just delete all this so it's kind of more understandable but now i just want to look for everything and now i can go in here and edit p which is position so if i middle click this is one of the things that actually already exists as you can see we added cd but by default it's not there but position is always going to exist as long as some geometry exists so if I put P in here, it's going to set these values between 0 and 1, and I can just drag these up. And if I want something a bit more organized, we can add to this value, like so. Like that. So now we're just moving up on Y. Uh, if I put a mountain sop down, good old mountain sop, I'm going to add some rotation to this as well just so you can see that happening. So I'm going to be doing position, rotation and scale here. So if I do orient, which is rotation, you're, nothing's going to happen until I need to set this distribution to direction and nothing's happening still. And magically we have to set the dimensions to four. <laughs> We're in the fourth dimension now. Uh, crazy crazy but now we're randomly randomly um, distributing these rotating these which is very nice and finally p scale which is going to be a large part of the um, the future tutorials on attributes and vex you know it's only going to be simple vex so don't get too worried but p scale um, is just a float value so if we change just this value here again I'm going to be explaining floats and stuff like that but Floats are a single value that have a decimal point in them, so it's um, able to go like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 1, etc. And we can set the min value as well, so we don't have allow any of these to be at zero. So there we have it. Uh, a little bit of a deeper dive into Houdini. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you've got any questions, remember to shoot them in the comments and I'll uh, try and answer them. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.